be the allied opportunities that you could look at as far as max financial services are concerned. So you could get, so there are three types, right? One is you could simply go and acquire another company which is currently there. Now we would not acquire a company just because it has a book of business. Hmm. We would acquire a company because it has some Do you have potential targets in India of that course, you've identified we, already? We, we have. We have. Have We've you spoken a, with anyone? We have started those conversations and I must say our board is very supportive as well along the, along the axis of these three uh, types of companies. Hmm. One is a simple acquisition which we could do. Like I said, the acquisition will be based on value. Mm. Uh, whether the asset has a particular degree of quality, whether the asset has an agency force which mm. is valuable to us, or it has some other distribution asset or mm. advantage. So what is the right? watch chest for, for a potential acquisition So for example, of this even today, we have almost 2,000 crores of, of extra capital or cash lying inside Max Life and our ability to raise capital is multiples mm. of that. So we have a very good uh, handle on how we could approach this market at the right time with the right partners. Mm. The second piece is actually a straightforward distribution deal for bank assurance, mm. right? Give me a broad timeline yeah. by when we could actually see a decision on some of uh, these uh, things. Uh, well, no, it's firstly the gate only opens on April, April 1, 1, 1, right? Sure. Yeah. I would say the next 12, 18 months we'll see a lot of action in terms of discussions and so on and so forth. And I, I suspect it's within that period of time that we will see something break with respect to either distribution or an acquisition or a merger. That's my estimate. Within the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So these things take time to cook. I mean, mm. y you know, you can make a decision but there are regulatory issues and all kinds of stuff. Since yeah. you spoke about the regulatory issues, let yeah. me ask you, uh, what could be the potential drivers as well as the potential risks as far as the insurance business okay. is concerned? From the regulatory risk point of view, I understand that that is a key concern that yeah. analysts are factoring in. Yeah. What could be the other potential drivers from a value creation point of view? You, sure. as well as the top risks. Okay, so, so, so let me take the potential risk first. There's a lot of talk about, you know, for example, expenses of management, right, which will, uh, which will go towards protecting policyholders mm. from excessive management sure. uh, overheads. We see that actually in Max Life as an advantage and an opportunity for us. Okay. Why? Because I think there are two or three kinds of life companies. Those who are very efficient, which we classify ourselves as. Mm. So we have a very small cost overrun mm. relative to everybody else. Mm. Our ability, therefore, to absorb a lower cap on expenses of management is much higher. And I think the bulk of the sort of cathartic regulations are sort of behind us. Now it's going to be a, a, a matter of sort of fine-tuning going mm. forward to make sure that customer and policyholder interests are protected, the industry sort of grows and develops. I believe we should now be in the development stage rather than the regulation stage mm. of the industry. So what does development then mean? Because it if I were to look at if I were to look at the growth performance yeah. and again, you know, right. for the sake of comparisons mm -hmm. to, to compare it to the uh, private banked yeah. uh, bank backed uh, insurance companies, yeah. uh, your growth would be about ten percent year on year at this point in time. Twelve. Uh, Twelve. 12 uh, to an average of about twenty to twenty five yeah. percent for the rest of the industry. So right. what can we anticipate then in terms of growth? So for us we've always maintained that for example, our product set is not linked on investment. So we don't sell that much of the ULIP type of products right. that most right. others do. You can get a, we could, we could do 100% growth. So you're not, well. you're okay with We're, market share? We are yeah. very good with a high teens. We've always given that guidance. It's a high teens sort of growth uh, path over the next, you know, five to six years, which, and, and a high margin mm. as well. Profitable. It's very profitable. Uh, you know, embedded value grows uh, and so on and so forth. So, and our return on embedded mm. value, by the way, is in the high 20s, which is quite unusual. So we want to build a quality business, Shireen. Let me now switch uh, and talk to you about Max Health, uh, because you've done an acquisition there uh, for Q2 uh, reported revenue growth of about 24% year on year, uh, cash profit growth of 31% year on year, the bitter margin declined, but that was largely on account of the acquisition. What is the kind of outlook as far as the healthcare business is concerned? Okay. So firstly, it's, it would be correct to say that we will remain regional for some more time. Because a lot of people ask us the question, are you going elsewhere and so on. So we will remain regional in the sense extremely NCR centric. Mm -hmm. And to the extent we'll go out, we'll go within the north. So more that, acquisitions? Um, yeah, absolutely. So that's, we've, act, in, in one manner of speaking, we've done two acquisitions. Yeah. One of a existing running, well, both of a running existing hospital. The second one, which is the one in Saket, uh, has uh, the, the whole opportunity to, 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 to create a 2,200 bed hospital. Mm. So we really, really have our hands full. Mm. 
Um, so over the next five years, what is the kind of capacity addition, bed addition that we're looking at as far as Max Health is concerned? Uh, I think we should be, we will be aiming at around 5,000 beds overall from a system perspective, right? Uh, and, and this acquisition that Anuji just mentioned of building another 1,200 beds next door to our flagship hospital in mm. Saket will build hopefully a, 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 a community with almost 2,200 beds so, mm. in one location. And, and do you believe that there is potential to, to eke out even higher margins because you are yes, higher, that, higher than would, your competitors? That's what I was coming to. Yeah. It's not only the question of the yeah. number of census beds, right. but it's also the opportunity that we now have to go back to the drawing board right. to reshuffle the deck and to increase capacity where we believe we have more prowess. Mm. So what kind of cash requirements would you have as far as the healthcare side is concerned? This has already been factored in into this acquisition. We have been also, because our company basically is inherently very strong, we've managed a real great combination of equity and debt to be able to take the next 10 or 15 years mm. of operations and create a debt equity ratio which is quite great. The only part of the NCR where yes. we are not number one in terms of capacity yes. is in the Gurgaon area. Mm. So if we were to find any opportunity, it would be the greenfield or organic, to plug that, okay. we will be yeah. the okay. own masses. So, so that's, that's the area that you're looking at sense, yeah. to, we to, would look at to be able to enhance capacity. If an opportunity came. Let me then ask you a quick question as far as Bupa is concerned. 28% uh, year-on-year growth in gross premiums and 18% year-on-year decline in losses. Do you believe, and of course we've already discussed how Bupa has hiked uh, its stake to 49%. What is the outlook then as far as Max Bupa Excellent. is concerned? Uh, two, <clears throat> three, four factors there. One is just the sheer demand, Shireen. I mean, unfortunately, okay. if you look at the uh, penalty of health insurance is less than 1%, mm. right? And certainly into our target market as well. So I see, for example, great headroom for growth, right? Which is the top line. Also, health risk management, by the way, is one of the key strategic levers that we have used. Now, you have life insurance needs, you have health care needs. Mm. I hope you don't have health care <laughs> needs, but sometimes you will. Uh, and you, you do. You have health insurance needs. Mm. Eventually, you've got a long way to go, but eventually you'll have senior living needs, mm. right? Who, which group, particularly in NCR, mm. can give you a managed care or a life operator sort of mm. proposition, mm. which is actually priceable. That's, a, ni that's a nice yeah, plug. That's go. a nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we want to do. But Rahul is creating a wrapper yeah. Yeah. called, you have a tour operator, yeah. so why don't you have a life, life operator? operator. Right. So he's actually working on this. That's it. So, you know, these things yeah. take time. And I don't know if this is the right example or not, but let me ask you anyway, uh, because it would beg the question that are we likely to see a Rand Baxi kind of situation play out as I'll far as the Max Group I'll is concerned? <laughs> <laughs> two. Oh. One, never, and two, heaven forbidden. Yeah. So far, God has been on my side, so I don't think that. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but I, I, I must, in, I must in all explain. seriousness, I must yeah. explain that. I must explain that. When I, when I talked about definition of family for me, I am not marred with any complexity, confusion, mm -hmm. strife, thank God, within my own family. Mm. The alignment between family and business is perfect. The alignment between Rahul and his team or my top team, I still call them mm. mine, they are mine, and the family is perfect. Mm. The way the family has arranged its life and businesses in a separate trust and the interface that we have between the trust and, mm. the, and the operating business is touchwood perfect. Mm. So without being uh, harsh or critical, and I, it's not my business to, in any case, to be go there, but structurally it is mm. not possible for a Rand Baxi to happen. There is alertness and governance of the highest order and succession planning of the highest order and institutionalization, that, and institutionalization of each individual <coughs> business, the group, its management, its board. One thing we didn't talk about, you know, when you talked about my stepping down, stepping aside, stepping mm. away, please see how the chair of each business has been mm. chosen. Why have we requested and invited Nenalal? to be chair of Max, Max Financial, Financial Services, Services yeah. and Rahul to be chair of Max Life. Rahul knows the rhythm of Max Life. Mm. He knows how the plumbing works in mm. Max Life. We want to bring to Max Financial Services a much broader horizon mm. of, 
option, optionality and thinking. The yeah, reason so I brought up the run back the example because at the time it was also seen as creating value for shareholders. Mm -hmm. At the time uh, the promoters got a hex, hefty exit option. Uh, it wasn't about family strife or any of that. Uh, and no, but it, that, was about it, that yeah. it was about management. Mm -hmm. we, the, 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 the public information seems to suggest that one of the reasons that that transaction happened and I have I have I had no insight and I really am not interested in any additional information mm -hmm. but I'm understand because the management of Rand Baxi was struggling mm -hmm. the management of any of my businesses or the max group is not struggling so therefore there was a gap in there which was supposed to be filled or plugged mm. by a, a, a very large Japanese strategic. Mm. That didn't happen and the rest is all history. No, but if you get a strategic, you're open to the idea as well of an exit. Uh, uh, yes, but the strategic will walk into a very sound management mm. platform, mm. which is what we have today. But I, for the sake, one of our prime drivers of our lives, and I'm now speaking for all of our six, seven of mm. us, myself, Rahul, Rajesh, Rajat, Mohit, uh, Tara and so on and so forth mm. is reputational capital. So mm. we are very alert to these things. That can can never happen. Really, can never happen. I cannot see any scenario okay. where that can happen. You know, you a business. Uh, you know, we're in business, so you can take business risk. A business can go yeah, up or down. Yeah, yeah, sure. But 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 the sort of the 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 the. the, 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 the the, the sort of crumbling okay. of, a, of, a, of a company cannot happen. Well, we wish you the both very thank best you. of luck and thank you very much for joining us here thank on CNBC TV 18. Thank Thanks very thank much. Thank, thank you. Thank Fantastic. Thank on you. that note, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special from all of us here. Goodbye and many thanks for watching.